go, let's go back to the Drake thing. He, he was trying to buy it? Yeah, um, he made an offer. And uh, I don't know if he's going to close, but I think it is interesting what's going on with the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, strategically for me, I think the best way would be for him to show up to the Super Bowl with a Rockefeller chain. What's good, guys? This is Murphy from Word on the Street channel. So after Dame Dash came out to reveal that Drake made him an offer to purchase his one-third ownership of Rockefeller, which only asset is Jay-Z's 1996 classic album, Reasonable Doubt, Drake has dropped an alleged tweet reacting to what Dame Dash said and is currently going crazy on the internet right now. Check this out. I reached out to my brother Dame Dash because he needed help for real. I just want to help a brother who is in need, maybe pull up to the Super Bowl in New Orleans with that original Rockefeller chain. Lot of laughs. That would be interesting. This tweet got the fans speculating about the situation and how possible this deal can go down. Don't forget that Jay-Z still got the right of refusal if he feels like the sellout will hurt him or the legacy of his craft. Because at some point, Dash exposed so many celebrities and rappers who are reaching out to him for same deal, but couldn't afford the $10 million he wanted. It's becoming clearer that Drizzy only wanted to buy off that album so he can end up clowning Jay-Z in a very disastrous manner. Here is the game. Jay had Lil Wayne off the Super Bowl in New Orleans and replaced him with Kendrick Lamar. And who is Lil Wayne's artist? Drake, of course. Now Drizzy is going to buy Reasonable Doubt and pulling up at Super Bowl wearing the original Rockefeller chain on his neck and trolling Jay-Z in front of the whole world. Damn it, that's gonna be crazy. And Jay is going to feel humiliated. But I still find it difficult to believe that one third of Reasonable Doubt, which only makes $100,000 a year, will be worth investing $10 million for only seven years although Drake can possibly start maximizing the album to make more money off it, and his record label will be excited if he buys that album, because it's going to be making them a hell lot of money in return. Left for me, I will advise Jay-Z to give Dame Dash the $10 million and get back his full right on his classic album, to save himself the embarrassment of being trolled by same person he doesn't F with, because that will hurt his legacy so bad. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I will get y'all the full clip in a minute. Kindly smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go back to the Drake. He, he was trying to buy it? Yeah, um, he made an offer. And uh, I don't know if he's going to close, but I think it is interesting what's going on with the Super Bowl shit. And, uh, you know, strategically for me, I think the best way would be for him to show up to the Super Bowl with a Rockefeller chain, you know, like a boss. So if he could close, if he wants to, you know, let's finish it up and let's do it. But if not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, a lot of people, like a lot of people that are famous have hit me about buying it. And I know they want to, but I don't think they can afford it at the price. And I'm not disrespecting them. I'm not calling out no names. But there are definitely people that, you know, a lot of price is stupid. But like if someone will go through all the problem and problem and be like, let me show you a fake bank account and this, that, and the third. I wish I get my, my lawyer and my lawyer will send him something. He don't even want to talk to him. Like, man, you tell him, send the paper, tell him. And then we press them to see if they're going to do what they never do. You know, but it's, it's just funny how many people really um, are hummus stunting. You know, this is something that uh, it's not about a profit thing. It's about art. You know, it doesn't make but 100000 a year. For me. But the symbolism, I guess, and what you can do and how to monetize it for those seven years. You like to make a lot of money. But for those seven years, and after that, you still own Rockefeller Inc. It's just reasonable doubt's not there. But for those seven years, you could run it up, have a lot of fun. You know? But uh, just if, if you really want to buy it, and if you don't have 10 million, or, you know, unless there's something creative you want to do, but other than that, just stop. You know what I mean? You just waste people's time. And uh, it was funny. At first, because I, I knew these things, and we set it up, tape it, all that shit. But uh, when they playing, but uh, you know now shit is getting serious. So they pushed the auction back to twentieth, and and this is something else I'm going to teach people about this situation. I'm not going to get into it too much, but because the government came up, so they want their money first. No, no, child support always gets their money first. So the more my kids get, the better. I'm not mad at that. I want them to put more child support. I want them to eat. Then comes the government, and they want millions of dollars. And then comes the people that have the judgment right now. So they're third in line to get paid. But this guy, as we all know, 
one third of Rockefeller Inc., which owns Reasonable Doubt, is for sale. And I've gotten a lot of calls, a lot of offers. I, I don't know if people are hummus stunting, you know, or, or not. We'll see who shows up. But I definitely got some very healthy offers. And I appreciate those. And, you know, obviously, if someone's trying to hate on the price or trying to uh, devalue it, it would be because they want to buy it. You know, like a first right of refusal. So if you do want to buy uh, one third of Rockefeller Inc., you are going to have to bring some bread. And anything over $10 million, I'm going to sweeten the pot. You get an original Rockefeller chain from off my neck. So, you know, I say, because I was the only one that gave out Rockefeller chains when Rockefeller really existed. If I don't give you the chain, it's not a legit Rockefeller chain. You get one of these, this is legit. This is the old school one from off my neck. You know, like how when I took one off my neck and gave one to Kanye, Cameron, all that. So, again, if you're going to call, please have the intention of spending some real money and actually completing the transaction. But, uh... If you come with the right amount of money, you're going to get a chain. Or, you know, at least you'll have to battle with Homeboy on the first right of refusal. How? You know, Rockefeller Inc. is for sale. You know, I don't expect anyone, just some average person to come by. It, or a third of it, not third. I don't want to get sued again. I know for some reason nobody wants me to sell it. But, I, I, you know, I'm ready to just move on, do my thing. And, uh... You know, I had a lawsuit, I had a judgment, and I'm like, yo, that's 800 grand, go get it from over there. They're not paying me neither. <laughs> so, they went, did the work for me. So, you know, pay that debt and I'd be able to sell it. Thought it all worked out for me. I'm sure there's a little twist they put on things, I don't know why. I do know why, but I don't know why. I don't know why about one thing, but I do know why about the other. He has a first right of refusal, so you're just some fucking bum ass board meeting. They stayed doing these board meetings. And all of a sudden, he gets the first right of refusal. Yeah, I don't really care. You know? I don't care. Don't slow nothing down for me. I mean, I don't know how, how deep homie's pockets is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm curious. If he gonna match that. You know, I put it off on the table. We'll see if we'll match it. But it was from, you know, other people. What I do hate is when people hit me about it. And be like, I'm gonna get it. And then they don't. Then they, you know. That's happened a couple times. I think people should look at it is that I had hindsight. At 18 or 19, no, I was about 20, in my 20s, to carve something out that I could make money from 30 years later. I had the foresight. I saw that in the future. Somebody asked me how I got so broke. Um, investing in my dreams. You know, when you're investing in your dreams and you dream big, you're always going to be broke. You'll have a lot of shit, but I don't have no money for nobody else. But that's what you call broke. But that's what it is. Long dreams.